Suomen presidentti Sauli Niinistö antoi haastattelun Al Jazeeralle. Presidentti aloitti haastattelun totemalla, että ei Suomi ole kutsunut itseään puolueettomaksi. First of all, we haven't called us neutral, rather militarily unaligned. Seuraavaksi presidentti sanoi, että eivät aikaisemmat yhteistyösopimukset Naton kanssa enää riittäneet Suomelle. The feeling we and Sweden have had that from our own will we remain as such and that it even might stabilize the situation in Baltiksi. But when President Putin announced that was last December that no enlargement of NATO anymore. I was immediately quite sure that we have to do something. You know, we have been enhanced partner in NATO. We have a lot of bilateral cooperation with Sweden, with USA, with UK, all that already. But uh, that was not enough anymore. President Niinistön mukaan Putin siis työnsi Suomen NATOon joulukuisella puheellaan, jossa hän sanoi, ettei NATO saa laajentua. So President Putin pushed Finland over the edge to, to join NATO effectively. Uh, let's say first he pushed by his uh, speech, mm -hmm. December speech, us to realize that we have to change, we have to go further. And then the final uh, uh, step was when he attacked uh, Ukraine, then it was very clear. Kysyttäessä kansan vastustuksesta NATOon liittymisen suhteen Niinistö sanoi, että hän ei kutsuisi sitä vastustukseksi ja että Suomella on ollut viestinä jo vuosikymmeniä, että Suomi pitää mahdollisuuden auki liittyä NATOon. A, a former NATO Secretary General said that he spent four years, his entire term, trying to convince Finland to join NATO and Putin managed to do it in four weeks. Can you just explain, I guess, before uh, the war and before Putin's speech yep. last year? What was the resistance uh, in Finland to joining NATO, do you think? I wouldn't call it resistance. Actually, we have had in our governmental program uh, for years, decades, a statement that we keep possibility of applying NATO membership open. Mm. And that has been a message in a way. Toimittaja Tom McRae kysyi, että kun Putin on kerran sanonut Suomesta tulevan Venäjän vihollinen, jos se liittyy NATOon, niin onko Suomi nyt Venäjän vihollinen? In the past, uh, Putin has said that if Finland does join NATO, you will be an enemy of Russia. So, are you now an enemy of Russia now that you have applied to join? Uh, well, they have listed countries which are uh, not friendly, and we are on that list. Uh, we would have been on that list uh, uh, even without applying the membership. I mean, helping Ukraine like we do which we would have done in every case, uh, that already was enough to be listed. <laughs> so that's the situation at the moment. But uh, yes, he has said that uh, earlier on, four years ago, uh, I mean, Putin has said that uh, so far he looks over the border and uh, he sees a, a Finnish friend, but if you join, he sees an enemy. Mm. So, and how that's, does that? That's his position. Yes. And but how does that sit with with you? That you are now an enemy to Russia. Uh, well, uh, that's what he has said. So we know. Mielenkiintoista niinistön haastattelussa on, että hän puhuu toistuvasti kansainvälisistä bilateraalisista ja jopa trilateraalisista sopimuksista Ruotsin, Ison Britannian ja esimerkiksi Yhdysvaltojen sekä Suomen välillä. Niinistö puhuu ikään kuin nämä sopimukset merkitsisivät jotain. Samalla presidentti ei anna kuitenkaan mitään arvoa Venäjän kanssa oleville sopimuksille, kuten Pariisin rauhansopimukselle ja 1992 solmitulle naapuruussopimukselle. Kummassakin on sovittu muun muassa Suomen puolueettomuudesta ja liittoutumattomuudesta. Been all the time advocating that European Union should do more together for security and that we became an enhanced partner in NATO. We have direct uh, agreements with Sweden, with the UK, with the USA, t bilaterally and even trilateral agreements. Suomi olisi voinut halutessaan irtisanoa naapuruussopimuksen tänä vuonna, mutta Suomi ei niin tehnyt.
Sopimus on voimassa aina viisi vuotta kerrallaan. Venäjän suurlähetystön lähetystösihteeri puhui naapuruussopimuksesta, erikoisoperaatiosta Natosta ja Suomen ja Venäjän suhteista valtakuuluu kansalle puolueen puoluekokouksessa 18. kesäkuuta Mikkelissä, jossa juhlistettiin naapuruussopimuksen 30-vuotista taivalta. On vaikutettava nähdä, että Suomi on niin häteisesti päättänyt seurata länsikumppaneidensa harkitsematonta linjaa, minkä tuloksena suomalais-venäläiset suhteet ovat itse asiassa tuhoutuneet. Ymmärrämme kyllä EU-solidarisuutta, mutta kun suomalaisilla on tapa sanoa, mitä useampi kokki, sitä huonompi sotka. Presidentti Niinistö toisti olevansa sitä mieltä, että NATO-hakemuksella on kansan tuki, koska sitä on kysytty mielipidetiedusteluissa. It seems like the decision to join NATO uh, has happened because of the war much quicker than it probably would have at any other time, only, yes. a, only a few months. So uh, how has the public reacted to that? If you look at uh, opinion polls from January, you see clear rise all the, day after day. So we ended up from 25 to, to approximately 80. Uh, that was very natural, actually. I guess opinion polls are one thing, but uh, you know, going, taking it to a referendum uh, is another. Was there any yeah. consideration of ever of ever doing that? Uh, I had earlier on an opinion that uh, we should have a very reliable uh, understanding what people think, and uh, the most reliable you surely get through <coughs> referendum. Mm. But uh, now that the figures poll after poll, done by different institutions, gave the same result. I, I think it's proven that uh, Finns, what Finns thought. Niinistö jätti ovelasti tietysti mainitsematta, että kyselyt oli tehty juuri sodan alettua, ja että kyselyn toteuttaneilla yhtiöillä on yhteyksiä maailman talousfoorumiin, ja että kyselyihin vastasi internetpaneelissa vain vähän reilut tuhat suomalaista. Kyselyissä ei puhuttu mitään Naton haitoista, eikä kysymyksiä oltu muotoiltu esimerkiksi niin, että tulisiko Suomen luopua puolueettomuudestaan. Kysyttäessä kansanäänestyksistä Niinistö kiersi aikaisemman kantansa. Niinistö puhui myös, että meidän tehtävämme on pitää Venäjän raja puhtaana. Putting the war to one side and hopefully it won't be going on for too much longer. What are the longer term implications of, of joining NATO in the, in the decades ahead, do you think? In the future? Yes. Well, I think that uh, uh, we have done, actually finished in a way, our, uh, our institutional uh, organization on security. But that doesn't end up, the, I'm sure that uh, in Finland we will uh, take care of our own defense too, because we do understand that uh, we have half of the NATO Russian border <laughs> uh, as our duty to keep it clean. Kysyttäessä kuinka luottavainen Niinistö on Suomen NATO-jäsenyyden suhteen, hän vastasi, että ratkaisu on presidentti Erdoganin päässä. Muistatte varmaan keväiset valtamerian artikkelit, kuinka Suomi on Natossa kesään mennessä. Now just on uh, NATO membership and where it is at at the moment, 28 of the 30 countries have already, yep. already ratified your uh, membership. Hungary has said it's going to do so in December. Turkey is still holding out. So how confident are you that you will become a member and when do you think that that might be? At the end I'm uh, quite confident, but... Uh, giving a timetable, that is uh, quite di difficult. How I see uh, the situation, it's President Erdogan's, the solution is only in President Erdogan's head, actually. And uh, we have uh, several times said that uh, we condemn all the terrorism, uh, also that one which uh, they face, but uh, we are following, and that was actually agreed with Turkey. We are following the European Convention on deporting, uh, Deportations. Mm -hmm. Niinistö sanoi myös Suomen seuraavan NATO, jos NATO kehittää mekanismeja terrorismin torjuntaan. Tarkoittaako tämä, että NATO mekanismit menevät Suomen lain yläpuolelle? Niinistö tietää entisenä lakimiehenä varmasti hyvin, kuinka vastauksensa muotoilee. 
and we will follow NATO if NATO de develops some mechanisms against terrorism. These are the two, actually, obligations we have, and we have followed them. Presidentti Niinistö toisteli, että on erittäin vaikea arvioida, miten Erdogan reagoi. Niinistö oli myös saanut kalluppeja Turkista. Uh, so, it's very difficult to make any estimations when, uh, when they will, and President Erdogan will react. But I'm confident and uh, I'm not worried because 28 countries have now said that yes, you're capable of joining NATO and that we see that you're worthy of getting the Article 5 coverage. Mm. That 28 countries has already said it. What's, do you have a message to President Erdogan? You know, the, the delay, the, a lot of critics and, and analysts have said that uh, he might be delaying um, to play to a domestic audience ahead of the elections next year. Do you think that's the case? And, and if it is, is that just playing politics with something that has got much larger ramifications? Uh, it uh, might very well be. We got uh, an opinion poll in, from Turkey, and uh, it seems that uh, a slight majority of people would like Turkey to um, accept our, ratify our membership, but in uh, Erdogan's party, the resistance is uh, majority. So that gives a hint of the domestic uh, policies. Niinistö sanoi, että ilkeitä asioita voi tapahtua. Uh, warned of the risks of Turkey and Hungary delaying. What do you think those risks are? I do repeat what I said uh, earlier on, uh, on uh, February, March, that uh, even though uh, we were not expecting any military actions, reactions from Russia, there might, uh, well, take place nasty things. And uh, uh, that's a game they know to, how to play. Like what? What uh, <coughs> hybrid world includes almost every possibility you can imagine. Kysyttäessä rajamuurista Niinistö sanoi sen olevan enemmänkin raja-aita, joka ohjaa prosessiin. I would call it more a fence of, uh, of uh, uh, arranging uh, to arrange order uh, on border than... Um, so it's not to deter people from trying to find asylum in Finland, it's well, to order them through a process order rather than to block them. Order them to process, yes. That's, uh, in my opinion, the, the idea of fence. And we all know what are the international uh, agreements. Uh, if uh, people asking for asylum, you have to study the case. Mm. It's obviously a significant concern of, um, you know, as we saw recently with the uh, Russian mobilization and yes. hundreds of thousands of Russians l fleeing the country in all directions. Well, they're Russians. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Kysyttäessä paljonko pakolaisia voisi tulla Venäjältä, Niinistö viittasi vuoden 2015 tapahtumiin. Hän ei maininnut mitään Ruotsista Suomeen saapuneista pakolaisista. Ilmastonmuutos tuli kuitenkin mainittua haastattelussa. How concerning, how many people could you expect or are you expecting to potentially, you know, try and, try and enter Finland from Russia? Actually we had an experience in 2015 winter time when suddenly uh, people started to come from Russia asking for asylum and at the end we found out that uh, people from uh, 32 nationalities came through asking for asylum. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> I do not believe that the same would now be repeated. We haven't seen any sign of that, mm. not at least yet. But uh, uh, well, warfare in Ukraine, warfare elsewhere, maybe even the impact of uh, climate change mm -hmm. might push people uh, moving and uh, it is possible that they move also via Russia.